What's up guys, my name is Max, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to build the cheapest possible hydraulic tubing bender on the market today. So this is kind of a replica of like a JD squared model 2 or Woodward Fab or whatever. And so this video, I'm going to compare all the different products that are available on the market, how much they cost. Then we're going to assemble this and I'll show you guys uh, in the description down below, I'll put links to where to buy all of this and how much I paid for it, um, as well as what was in the video. Nothing in this video is sponsored. I bought all this stuff um, myself, just shopping around for the best deals, but there were no discount codes, coupon codes. I have no relation with any of these vendors. Um, and so this is all just my own honest uh, opinion and feedback. Next, we're gonna build the stand that you guys see here. I'm gonna give you guys all the dimensions, all the how-tos on how we build this stand. And then uh, finally, we're gonna bend some tube and I'm gonna show you guys how to make a uh, cheater piece. Additionally, down in the description below, I'm gonna link out to some of the videos that um, I have watched over the years that really kind of inspired me to go down this path. Um, that hopefully will uh, provide you guys with some additional context of some really smart people out on YouTube, some professional fabricators that will link down below um, that really go into a, a much higher level of detail than I can. Uh, for me, this video was all about how do we do this as cheaply as possible while still getting a quality product. And so there are chapters on this video. Uh, feel free to click around, kind of take a look at the, the things that are interesting to you, and I hope you guys really enjoy this video. I set out with the mission of figuring out what is the cheapest way to kind of piecemeal together a professional grade tubing bender uh, because it's a very expensive tool. Uh, for those of us who have done metal fabrication, a tubing bender is often kind of one of the last things you get. To get you started, you need a tubing bender. Generally speaking, for most racing organizations, you're going to need an inch and a half and an inch and three quarter die. Now, if you want to do like small tube work and kind of fancy stuff, that's fine. But if you look at um, like the score rule book or the SCCA rule book for most vehicle uh, weights, you're going to be in the inch and a half or the inch and three quarter range. Uh, you're going to need a tubing notcher. Yes, uh, you can notch tubes uh, with a flap disc and you need a hydraulic conversion. Now, Yes, all of these are start out of life as mechanical benders, but that requires you to one, bolt them to the ground because you have to be able to like reef on them. And two, it makes it very difficult to do one man bends because, you know, if you're using all your energy to kind of move the bar to bend the tube, it's really hard to keep a careful eye on the exact uh, degree gauge. So in my opinion, um, yes, you can do this manually. But to me, if you're gonna be doing one man fabrication at home, the hydraulic conversion is, is absolutely worth it. Uh, and so there are, in my opinion, the Amazon eBay, which is what I'm gonna show you guys today, and I'm gonna provide links down below and kind of explain how you find some of these things. And then you have your six main competitors. So there are five stylistic competitors to this, which is kind of the JD squared style. So there's the JD Model 32, there's the Pro Tools 105 HD, the JMR, the Eastwood, the Woodward Fab, which is what this is a clone of. And then Rogue sells a very different design, but it um, kind of functions in the same way. So I've included them here as well. So if you bought everything that I have bought and plan to buy doing it this way, the entire setup so that includes a bender two dies a tubing notcher and the hydraulic conversion the amazon ebay route will run you about eleven hundred dollars all said and done and now obviously eleven hundred dollars is not the two hundred dollars that's in the title and in the thumbnail uh, but that is the real world cost and you might say okay well how does that stack up and i got all these prices from the manufacturer's websites um you know as of may 2024 right so if you go to JD and you buy the Model 32, which is what this is based on, and you buy all the same components, including their uh, tubing notcher, it's going to run you about $1,700, which uh, is about a $600 uh, cost difference. Uh, Pro Tools is even more expensive. It runs you about $2,500 for everything, which is about a $1,300 cost difference. Uh, JMR is about $2,100, so about a $1,000 difference. Eastwood will send you back $1,500. Uh, it's only about a $350, $400 cost difference to what we did today. It's definitely the closest. Woodward Fab, 
um, will run you about $2,300, a $1,200 difference. And Rogue, which makes, like I said, a, a, a different style vendor, but is very popular in the YouTube crowd and a lot of uh, smaller fabrication areas, will run you about $2,000 for the same setup, which is about a thousand, or not about a $900 difference. That kind of puts it into perspective. So for me so far, what I've bought is the tubing vendor. We've bought the Swag Hydraulic Conversion Kit. We've bought a hydraulic cylinder from Harbor Freight. And I bought one one and a half inch die because the first two projects that I'm going to be tackling with this thing are going to use inch and a half tube. Um, so eventually I'm going to add a tubing notcher. I think eventually I need to add a one and three quarter die and maybe some of the smaller dies. But with that said, I think now we're ready to kind of jump in and start doing the unboxing. As you can see, this box is sealed. I've never opened it. I paid about $200 for this delivered. Uh, you can find these on Amazon. You can find them on eBay. Um, I'll provide a, a link down below to the one that I bought. Um, but the company names and vendors change all the time. Uh, but the product should be the same. So let's open this thing up and uh, see what's inside this box. So remember, they sell you just the bare tool. There should be, there's no dyes in here. There's no hydraulics in here. This is just uh, the bare vendor tool. And this is actually pretty nicely packed. So let's see. So this is our this is our cheater bar. Um, we're actually not going to need that at all. So I gotta say, at, at first look at this, um, this was actually really nicely packed, very nicely organized, um, and pretty nice in general. There were, I saw a lot of complaints, people saying, oh, well, they got their ba uh, boxes ripped up, they're missing parts. As far as I can tell, this is very, this one was very well packaged. So the vendor I chose was uh, was pretty good. Looking here at the instructions, they actually have a step-by-step -step instruction manual. So let's, uh, let's see what this looks like when we put it all together. One thing that we don't have yet, um, that we're gonna try to just assemble without today is I don't have uh, a stand built. And so we're gonna kind of just assemble this all on the workbench today. One of the things I'm gonna do a little bit later in this video is uh, we're actually gonna build a stand to allow this thing to, to work in place and then kind of roll around. This right here is our little base plate. It starts with this. So this will actually be what mounts to the base. All right, let me catch you guys up on what's going on here. So lesson one that I learned was you can't really assemble this thing on a table. It has to be mounted. So I basically just grabbed an old engine stand, welded on a piece of plate steel and bolted it through. But then you basically just bolt uh, these two bolts tight. And so you've got this piece right here, then you've got a center. There's a, a lock 
piece right here that will help keep this all centered. But this is kind of the general uh, assembly. And so the only thing that's really tricky is you gotta loosen these bolts, get this bushing assembly all assembled, and then kind of tighten everything together. And now you can't finalize all of your bolts until you install the dies. And so let me bring you guys over here and I'll, I'll show you what the dies look like and then we'll get them installed. So here are the pieces that come with our die. So I got this die from a place called Kaka Industries, which is kind of funny. Uh, they make fairly inexpensive, um, this is a 120 degree die. 180 degree die would have been ideal, but that would have sent me back about $500 instead of the, I think 185 that this was. And so the die is made of three kind of key pieces. You have the strap, the die itself, and then this is kind of, I think, called the follower tube. And so this is what allows you to make those kink-free bends. And so this is all got to get installed onto uh, the tubing bender before we can kind of finalize all the dimensions on everything on the tubing bender. Uh, and so this die comes with a bolt and a roll pin. I believe there's like a roll pin that has to be hammered in um, under here as a stop. And then this screw... Um, will go into here to set uh, your, your final stop distance. Uh, so let me get this all onto the bender and I'll show you guys how it all installed. Now that we got everything assembled, let me kind of show you guys how uh, this works. And now I haven't bolted everything tight and the other thing I will say is, uh, this right here is kind of floppy because of the very basic mount that I made just to, to install this today and show you guys. Um, I would not do this. Uh, you definitely need this to be firm. Otherwise this whole thing kind of, uh, it kind of binds all the pins. Here's how this works. So you have this piece right here. This is kind of holds your tube straight. And as you can see, uh, there's kind of an angled piece and then a straight piece. The angled piece goes towards the work of the tube. There was a roll pin that came with the kit. This is just to create an offset. Uh, so basically, I'm just randomly dropping this into one of the holes, but it basically goes in like that. And now you have your die here, and the die is adjustable, right? It's got three possible positions depending on what's, what degree of the die you're doing. So if you're starting off, so zero to like 60 to 70 degrees is this first pin because you want to start back here. The tube is going to go straight through here. And then you have this piece, this is a collar. Put this on, you put the little, uh, little doohickey through there and then you can use a set screw here to tighten the tube so the tube does not move. There's also a threaded part right here uh, that can be used for a degree pointer, um, which basically shows you how many degrees of bend uh, you've pulled through. And so it kind of depends on how you want to have this set up. Uh, some people like to have a piece of wire that goes underneath and points over here. Um, once we get some tubes in and get this all set up, uh, then we'll, we'll kind of take a look at that. Uh, but that's basically how this works. So if you're using a traditional ratchet style, right, there's your ratchet and then you pull this back and grab the next one and then there's your ratchet. And you just kind of keep going like this and you just keep ratcheting through your angle degree. That's kind of how the bender works. So the next step we're going to do right now is we're going to install uh, kind of our hydraulic conversion. Swag actually sells two kits. I ended up going with this machined version. It's a little bit more expensive, but it also basically comes with uh, the bungee strap and a few other bits and pieces that basically, in my opinion, make it the same price as the lower original price well together kit. I think this is a, a better value, frankly, and so that's, you know, kind of what I did. I did. To install this thing, you kind of have to disassemble uh, your tubing bender. So I've done that. I took the rotating assembly out. Swag recommends assembling this on a workbench. I think I'm actually going to do it on the stand after I've reinforced it. It's a little bit stronger. I think it'll be easier for me to film. They send a, a really thorough, excellent set of color instructions with wonderful photos uh, to kind of get you through. And it includes all kinds of little things like this uh, die cast release pressure knob. So we're going to just follow the instructions uh, on this kit and we're going to go through it. So the first thing it says is to install this. And so this is an eight ton Ram from a Harbor Freight. This was about $120. Uh, and this is the Ram that goes for this kit. Um, and now keep in mind, this Ram is way more powerful than uh, this bender. So the Ram is capable of eight tons, which is 16,000 pounds. The thickest metal that this 
uh, bender is capable should only require about two and a half tons uh, of force. You can definitely destroy your ship if you have this uh, set up, so keep in mind, just because the ram can handle it doesn't mean the rest of this assembly is, is up to snuff. So we're gonna follow the instructions. The first step in the Swag Off Road Kit is to install this. And the way that you do that is you knock out the dowel pin on the, the set screw that came with it. And now what we do is we install this and basically just punch the dowel right back through releasing the pressure without having to use the little tool. So you can just do it by hand. So now it's set. So now you can see I can release the pressure on the cylinder and close it uh, just with my hand, which is just like a nice, nice feature to have. Uh, the next step is we have to remove this pump assembly that's right here on top of this jack. Um, as far as I can tell, this is basically just a matter of getting some needle nose pliers and removing the cotter pins. And so in this case, this has basically the ability to pump up the ram, you know, using this mechanical, but there's also this uh, hydraulic hookup that we can use to cycle the ram with air power. And that's what we're going to be using. But it is cool that there is a, a mechanical fixture here. So we just have to remove all of that. We install these threaded studs into our cylinder. So it says the, the top is the side that's engraved with swag and the long thread is on the bottom, the shorter thread on the top. So this is our shorter thread. So this is an eight millimeter. So we're just going to snag it tight. This says do not over tighten. Uh, they don't need to be any more than hand tight as the bender arm will prevent them from backing out. The hex holes are provided for removal in case you need to remove them later. Use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer and spread the cylinder far enough apart to insert this, this eighth inch uh, spacer. So this is basically gonna force this apart so that we can slide it over the cylinder. Using, okay, make sure the flat bar does not stick down to where the cylinder ram will pass through. So you can see we're just splitting a little bit. And then it says, apply grease to the provided two inch long bolts, which are these guys. Prevent them from seizing, install them, into the two outside ports. We're actually gonna use these to force this apart a little further. So we take this, we screw it down, and it's actually gonna run into the, into this piece of bar stock. So now you can see that the ramp actually slides out in the same uh, area as these two guys. Position the clamp as close to the rounded edge of the ram as possible with the short threaded stud aligned with the machine nut. So there we go. So what you're seeing here is that the short stud is aligned with uh, the bleed valve because the bleed valve has to be pointed ow, upright when all is said and done, otherwise this won't work. So basically we have uh, this guy lined up with this guy as close to the rounded edge of the ram as possible with the short threaded part aligned. So this is basically right up where the ram starts, there's like a rollover point. So that's perfect. And now uh, we can remove these push apart screws. There we go. So now that's removed and we're gonna insert these three screws uh, from this side and tighten them down to 25 foot pounds. And these are also uh, is a six millimeter. Yeah, six millimeter. So now we're gonna torque these down to 25 foot pounds. We get to take this whole assembly over and start uh, installing it on the bender. So we're going to basically have to take the bender all the way back apart again in order to uh, kind of get this piece installed. But let me show you guys the final product here. So this is our Swag Off Road conversion kit. It's very important. You see this is pointed straight up to the sky. That's going to allow us to relieve pressure properly. On this side, we have a bungee cord. It's pretty strong. It's tied to a pin down here as well as to this pin here. So what this allows us to do is basically once we relieve the hydraulic pressure, this will close up on its own. Here, there's our two spacers that are uh, centering our pin here. And you can see this is all in alignment. So I went ahead and just popped this back in here for now. As you can see, this is our die. We might need to make a small adjustment to the, uh, to the roll pin that's hammered in there. It's hammered in just a little too far. But uh, here's our die, here's our follower. And we still need to tighten this guy up a little bit, but uh, there's our degree wheel. This whole piece is now fully assembled and we have hydraulic, uh, or I guess pneumatic function. So we got this hooked up to an air hose here. 
and you can see this is basically going to be bending our tube. And let's say that's all the bend that we want, right? Now we can just go back here, turn this knob, shows you the completed tubing bender. Now, one of the cool things that this kit comes with, and part of the reason I recommend buying the, the kind of higher end Swag Off Road kit is it comes with this. If you saw earlier in the video, I basically made a temporary stand out of this. I think this is 316, so we basically had to plate it to make this whole thing kind of a little bit more rigid. This right here, as you can see, is probably, I don't know, three eighths. But, uh, this, is, this is really, really thick, girthy stuff, plasma cut. Uh, it's really nice. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that to build our final stand. Next step in our tubing bender uh, adventure here. Uh, and so now I have the material to build a stand. Now there's a lot of different designs out there. You can just Google tubing bender stand. All kinds of creative people do all kinds of creative things. Um, I'm gonna build something really simple based on the materials that I have. And I literally went over and looked at the current stand, took some measurements, and I'm basically building it just uh, kind of like back of a napkin really in my head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a base using this uh, one by three tubing that I have left over. Um, it's not quite eighth wall, eighth wall. I think it's like 0.098. Uh, so maybe like a 12 or 14 gauge. Okay, so you can kind of get an idea of, of what I'm building here, right? So we're gonna have this cross piece this is heavier wall material. This is actual 120 wall, two by two inch square tube. This is gonna be our main post for the uh, tubing bender. And then there's also gonna be a kicker that comes down like this and ties it in and basically triangulates everything. And that'll also give us a place to keep our dies. Additionally, we're gonna build a small box that we can weld onto here, basically a flat uh, area that we can use to keep pins and stuff. And then if you remember, we have this left over from our Swag Off Road kit. And this is actually gonna basically bolt on like this. And then that's gonna be our uh, tubing bender mount. And so that's gonna be kind of locked in right there. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the welder and we can probably start uh, burning some of this stuff in. So now I'm just gonna kind of eyeball how I want this set up. So if we put this here, and then pretend this is more two by two tubing. So we want something like this, or ideally we want something like this. That way we can install uh, mounts onto here. And I think what we're gonna do is, this whole piece is 32 inches. And I think that I'm gonna put the outside of this post at the 22 inch mark. So basically right here is the 22 inch mark. And that basically puts us a little bit off center. Obviously, what is that? Six inches off center, but I think it'll help kind of stabilize everything to, to give us the triangulation. Because the, the way that it mounts is you have a cylinder that hangs off in one direction and then the actual bender goes in the other. So now we're gonna, we basically squared up this main post and now we're gonna burn it in. And as you can see, we already have kind of our, our structure here in place. All right, there we go. Now we've got our base all fully welded together. And so now we get to figure out how we want our uh, our tubing bender to get set up on. So I wanted to show you guys something just kind of as a teaching moment as well. If you take a look at this here, I don't know if this camera is gonna catch it, but this bottom part actually warped from the heat, right? And so because I use this kind of thin wall material, these are kind of bowed where I welded them and this is kind of bowed where I welded them. But sometimes this is what happens when you're just like trying to be cheap and build stuff with scrap that you have. I could have clamped it to something, I probably should have, but I didn't, but it's fine. 
So our next step is we gotta take this thing and we have to kind of tack it in place so we can figure out how the bender goes on here. And this is something I wanted to show you guys. So because of the warpage in the bottom, this panel, if you sit this flush, you can see very not level. And so a little trick you can do is I basically welded on a couple of little, little bump skis there. And now you can see that our panel sits flush again. And when I go to weld it up around the perimeter, it's not really gonna make any difference to fill that gap. I'm gonna loosen the bolts. We're gonna remove this mount from the mount. And what I've done is I put a C-clamp on it, one, to keep it from spreading, and two, uh, to give me a handle to carry this thing around on. So I haven't burned this thing in yet, but this is basically where we're gonna go. We're shooting far forward. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the tubing bender actually installed on this thing, which is a huge pain in the butt because the thing weighs probably over 100 pounds with the cylinder on it. But we gotta get it installed so I can figure out where ergonomically I wanna build a little rack to put my pins. Well, I was talking about gusseting stuff, but honestly, this plate is so thick that this is now so sturdy that like all the, um, but, like all the pins, like if you guys remember earlier in the video, I was struggling getting these pins in and out. Uh, and it was because that whole thing was flexing. But now this is so rigidly on there that nothing is flexing, which is super cool. We want to build a little shelf that we can basically drop these drive pins. So this pin right here gets removed pretty frequently every time you have a new piece of material. Uh, this pin gets pulled out pretty frequently because you're changing the drive position on the die. And so I'd like to have a little uh, shelf all right, let me catch you guys up on some progress. So we built this, this is just some expanded steel. It's a little shelf. Uh, this is a 16 millimeter wrench, which is the same thing as five eighths. This is the right size for this bolt on this kit. Now we have our pointer set up. This is just a piece of welding rod. Uh, however, this bolt, this thread is something weird. I don't know exactly what it is. As best I can tell it's one eighth NPT pipe thread. And I found a bolt that basically threads in like five or six turns. And so I cut it down and use that. So that's my solution there. So this little shelf is cool because you need this wrench here. And the other thing that you do is you remove these pins a lot. The pin that you use the most is what's called the actual drive pin, which goes into the die. Now, for some reason, this pin, which you use the most, has the shortest amount of threads. If you compare the size of the head over here, it's very easy to grab. This one is smaller. And so what I've done is I've basically just welded on a T that makes it easier for me to pull this pin out and also gives me something to smack it in with without hitting anything else. Um, so this is just like a little bit of like, I don't know, quarter inch rod or something that I had. And so I did that, so that pops out. And you can put this here and now I can, you know, make adjustments with my die, you know, whatever, whatever I need to do right make it or if i need to pull pull this out i can set this aside and i can do everything with one hand right i got the other hand on the camera and so this is really convenient the other thing that i would like to do is i think we're going to build some sort of little shelf here now on the bender itself from an ergonomic standpoint you fit the pipe in from here so you spend a fair amount of time lining things up from the back uh, but you also spend a lot of time up here because this is where the drive pins are so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add a small storage shelf back over on, in this corner. Um, and that way we can basically keep our test pieces, things like that. Um, because we want to be able to keep those with the bender. We want this to be basically one unit. Everything that you need com comes with it together. So you're not trying to pick up multiple pieces uh, and run around the garage and do stuff like that. I'm going to finish the little shelf. I'm going to show you guys the final product in terms of our stand. But after that, all this thing really needs is to be unbolted and get hit with a coat of paint. So we got the last piece uh, done on our stand. It's actually pretty, pretty strong. Basically just welded it in a, in a couple of corners. And you can see I just threw a piece of random tubing on it. And it's convenient because you never, because of the way the ram is, you never really want to be in this space. And so it's the perfect place to put that. Um, I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to install a die holder because I don't have a second die and I'm not quite sure where ergonomically it fits yet. Um, and I'm just going to rattle can this stand. So later on down the line, if we got to sand off a little rattle can at a, at a spike for the dies and then paint it again, it's not a huge deal. This thing's going to get pretty beat up in the garage anyway. This distance from here to here is about 32 inches, about 30 inches wide. 
and this uh, plate right here sits about 30 inches, 38 inches tall, excuse me, with the casters. Um, I'm about six foot tall. This is where things conveniently fall to my hands. Our next step here is we need to build our basic 90 degree cheater. And now the cheater piece uh, is designed to help you quickly and efficiently understand how much material you need for your bend, how much material you, where your bend starts and ends, and how much material you need on either side so that you can scope uh, projects correctly. Uh, and it's just kind of something that makes it a little easier to visualize, uh, you know, things either on the vehicle or whatever. It's just kind of a, a visual reference that makes life really easy. And so what we've done here, this is a 20 inch piece of pipe. I just literally cut it, chamfered the ends. That's all there is, we cleaned it up. And what we've done is from here, this is five inches all the way through six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is 15 inches. And this is our start. And now what I've done is I've used the welded seam on the pipe in order to uh, give myself a center line. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically put this thing in the bender, figure out exactly, uh, we're gonna reference this with the start of the die. So there's some folks that'll tell you, hey, I reference off the start of the die. There's some folks that'll actually put a, a mark in the die that shows where the actual true bend starts and use that, it doesn't matter what your reference point is. You can make your reference point five inches in front of the die. It doesn't matter. As long as your reference point for all your projects is the same, mathematically it's gonna work out the same. I'm gonna bring you guys over to the bender and then we're going to kind of start uh, start bending this. Here we are, this is uh, the front of the bender, right? The cylinder's back over here. It's a little weird for me with the camera here, um, but you can see our indicator here is at zero. We've taken off uh, this piece so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this in from the back and we're gonna line up our start mark with the start of the die because the way this is set up is you can just not see the front of the die so we may end up using some sort of other reference mark in the future but for the purposes of this demonstration this will work just fine right there we have our lot our weld seam is at the top the start is at the start of the die and we're going to put our lock sleeve line that up and now we're going to tighten this down we have our handy dandy wrench cinch this thing down you don't need to like crush the tube or anything it just needs to be taut and so now we have everything in place and what we're going to do let's see make sure our bender is set at precisely zero and now the goal here is we want to get this piece all the way to 90 so now we've got our pipe in place. We've got our start mark with the front leading edge of the die. We've got this tightened down. And now everything is loose. And so remember, the first thing we gotta do is we gotta figure out how many degrees it takes just to get this tight. So we're just gonna ease into it a little bit. Now we're tight. So we're probably three degrees in just to tighten up the tube. And now what we're gonna do is we wanna get to uh, 90, a 90 degree bend. And so remember, there's also going to be some spring back. So we're going to shoot for something like 95. So now you can see we got to just shy of 50 degrees. We'll call it 48 degrees on our first bend. And so the die has multiple drive, drive pin holes. And so now to get the next 45 we need to release the die or i'm sorry release the hydraulic cylinder a little bit until we can there we go that's the sweet spot and so now we close this back up and we can drop it into the next drive pin in the die So now you can see we got to 94 degrees and I'm just guessing, but I think this will give us enough spring back that we should end up with a perfect 90 degree angle. So let's, uh, let's get this thing out. There we go. Now you can see the tube is loose. We can pop this out and we can basically slide our tube out and there we go. So now we can see, you can see my start point was a little bit off. I lined it up, but it actually slid in the die a little bit. 
But let's go back to the workbench and take a look at what this actually tells us. So here's our cheater piece. As you can see, it's pretty close. Half a degree is probably within the realm of what can be expected from a bender of this quality, right? And so what we've done is you can see this, this is my start of the die. This lines up with the start of the die. And this is where the actual bend starts. What I've done is I've cut a notch into this. And so I can measure from the start of the bend and say, oh, well, it's five and a quarter inches to the end of this pipe. And we've done the same thing over here. And you can see, so uh, if this is the start of our bend, we use one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, seven inch of material to kind of make our bend. Basically gives you a place to notch in and you can uh, take a measurement. And so I know that if I start my die here, there's about a quarter inch of depth. And what I've done on the bender side is this, um, I basically take all the slack out of the tube, reset the pointer to zero, and this was 93 degrees will give us just about a 90 degree bend. Probably go just a little bit under that and get it, get it right dialed in. Uh, and mind you, this is the second or third bend I've made with this uh, bender, right? So the, the more I work with it, the, the, the better I'm going to get in terms of, uh, you know, how accurate I can make these. But these shooter pieces are great to have because this kind of lets you plan things out on your project uh, and gives you a, a better idea of kind of the, the amount of material that you're going to need for, for certain things. That's pretty much it. I will say there are uh, better explanations of how this works than the one I did. I gave you guys just a very brief overview of how this is supposed to go together. And just like that, we have a complete tubing bender and now we're ready to move on to some tubing projects. Um, you'll see those on the channel uh, sometime in the coming months. Uh, they're very excited to finally like put this thing to use. I've always wanted one of these. And so basically what you see here today uh, is about $750 for uh, tools and mm, I don't know, probably around 50 bucks worth of material to build a stand and whatnot. Uh, and, but a lot of this stuff was scrap uh, and so I already had it on hand. If you don't have it on hand, obviously it costs you a little bit of money to kind of buy some of these things to, to build a stand. Um, Initial experiences, I basically bent maybe three or four uh, test pieces with this thing. It's cool. It really works. It takes a little bit of finesse to figure out the angle measurements uh, on the on the bender as opposed to the real world. Make sure that you're getting as, as close as possible. But like any other tool, right, practice uh, and time are kind of what help you uh, get good at fabrication. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. All the links to everything are in the description below. I'm not affiliated with any of these brands again. So this is just what I paid my own money for. This is what I have here in my own home garage. Um, with that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, uh, to keep up to date with new videos that come out. Thanks.